Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome on. Let me double check, make sure that I'm live. Can you see me? All right. Okay, so we'll let everybody jump on for today's live play date. I am super duper excited about this project. We're going to be making our cactus lollipops today. All right. If you guys are jumping on, let me know if you can see me all right and hear me all right before we get started. We'll make sure everything is working good. I have my iPad set up right below um, here too, so that once I turn my camera down, I can see you guys' comments. Welcome on, everybody. All right. And let me know where you're watching from too. That would be super fun to see where everybody is from. Alright, I'll show you our lollipops too while we are waiting for everybody to hop on. So we have a couple different lollipops we're going to make today, but we have our cute little potted cactus, and then we have our sprinkle-filled uh, mini cactus lollipops too, which are super duper cute. So that'll be super fun. I just love how this potted uh, cactus uh, came out. Um, this is one of our new molds, so I was really excited to show you guys the little flower on the top. So uh, we'll go over all about how we're going to use that. And then I'm also going to show you all my tips and tricks for getting all of the sprinkles in the ice melt without them melting and what kind of sprinkles are best to use so um, that we can make those cute little sort of abstract landscape sunset uh, cactus lollipops too, which look really cool because they're transparent um, on the back as well and they have the sprinkles in them. So lots of fun stuff for today. Let me know if you are planning on playing along with me today too um, and creating with me or if you're going to watch and make the um, project later. Lots of fun, um, different ways that you can interpret this too, not just with lollipops, but you can also do, um, you know, cake toppers and cupcake toppers because these aren't specifically um, lollipop molds. Like that's the only thing you can do with them. There's so many different ways that you could go about this and you can use different mediums in them as well, which would be super duper fun. All right. So we'll just wait a couple more minutes until we get started and then we will get going. So I'm just preheating my ice melt in the microwave. It should be warm enough now. Um, we're going to start with clear and then we will do some coloring as well. Hey Ash, welcome on from Portland. Fantastic. Sorry about bumping you guys. <laughs> All right, so we will go ahead and get started here. Uh, yeah, my mom Michelle is here too. I just saw her comment pop up on my account. So um, she is going through all of the comments uh, and monitoring them for me too while I work. So if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, write them in the chat. And then if you're watching the replay, you can write them or you can also message me. You guys are always welcome to message me um, if you ever have questions about projects that you're working on um, that you're recreating out of uh, pieces that I made. Definitely, definitely send me all of your ice milk questions. All right, awesome. Great, so uh, we'll go ahead with a little bit of an intro on ice melt. Um, so this is, of course, our semi ice melt that we're gonna be using. So it's pre-cooked and ready to use. All you have to do is melt it down. Um, so just 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals in the microwave until uh, it is a liquid. So this is already pre-cooked and tempered. So all you have to do is melt it. There's no temperatures or recipes or anything at this point. You just melt it down in the microwave and it will be ready to use. Um, so like I was just saying before, we are going to be um, coloring our own ice melt for this project because I wanted to get some specific shades 
but you could absolutely use a pre-colored ice melt that comes the colors that you want or you can um, color it yourself whatever is easier you can also paint it on top if you wanted to uh, instead and use a clear base or a white base that would work good too sometimes that's easier for some little details and things like that which we're going to be doing a combination of today because I'm painting um, some little details on our cactus from the little kind of impressionistic spines and the little flower on top too so we're going to be doing a mixture of layering colors and hand painting but you could definitely paint the whole thing if you wanted to it's just a little bit different look so yeah uh, we're starting out with the clear ice melt and melting it in the microwave make sure that you wear your gloves because ice melt is hot it's about 300 degrees fahrenheit which is around 150 degrees celsius so very very hot you don't want to stick your finger in it um, i highly recommend usually a cotton glove and then a nitrile or latex glove over top of that and that will buffer the heat and keep it from sticking uh, and just protect your hands um, and i know some people are intimidated by ice melt uh, if you are newer to working with it but remember if you bake you make cakes uh, you use ovens and stoves all the time this is not even as hot as ovens and stoves are so um just wear your you know hand protection um and be careful with, with, with what you're doing uh, and you won't have any problem the more that you work with it the more and more you'll learn and the more you'll build confidence uh, with working with the hot stuff but you definitely want to wear your gloves when you're working with the liquid don't follow my bad example um, i'm not wearing gloves but that's only because it's easier for me to demonstrate for you guys without those and from doing this for about 15 years my hands have no heat sensitivity left in them so definitely wear your gloves um, when you're working with it but uh, yeah, you'll kind of just build your confidence as you go um, when working with ice malt. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and tilt my camera down. So just give me just a second to get that all configured. Um, let me know any ice malt questions that you have to begin with. Um, if you do have any about the ice malt itself. All right, so I'm just going to tilt this down. I'm waiting for my iPad to catch up so that I can see. What you guys are seeing, I think I am pretty good here. How does that look to you guys? Let me know. All right, just move that over a little bit. Fantastic. All right, so like I said, I pre-melted my ice melt so that it is um, melted and boiling in the microwave. So I'm just going to check on that really quick. I'm going to give that maybe 30 seconds or so because I started it before we got started um, or before I started the live. So um, it did thicken just a little bit, but ice melt can be remelted as many times as you need to. Uh, but you can see our little lollipops a little bit closer up that we're going to be making today. So again, we're doing our potted cactus. And then we're also doing our cute little sort of impressionistic landscapes with the sprinkles and the mini cactus mold as well. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to start on pouring the layers for our potted cactus since that one is a little bit thicker. So let's see, I'm just going to move these over here out of the way. While we grab our mold, let me check on the ice malt. That should be good for now because we're going to section it a little bit and color it. All right, so this is our brand new potted cactus mold. I absolutely love uh, how this turned out. It is so, so cute. And you can use it with lots of different mediums. Remember, not just ice mold, but you can use it with um, fondant and gum paste. You can use it with chocolate. You can use it with gelatin. How cute would little jello shots be in these? Um, and, you know, lots of different ways that you can go about making your little cactus um, decorations. But we are, of course, going to use ice mold today and turn them into lollipops. It's not, um, like I said, a specific lollipop mold. It doesn't have to be a lollipop, which means we're adding the stick on after, and that gives you way more freedom. So you could actually just use this as a little individual potted plant. So this would be really cute, like on the tier sides of tiers of cakes or uh, individually on top of cupcakes. You can even make them in different um, layers of mediums. So like you could do, you know, chocolate on one half and fondant on, you know, another part of it, kind of how we're going. So you can press the um, fondant or gum paste or modeling chocolate into half the mold and get half of a cactus. If you wanted to put it up flat against the cake, that would work really good too. So many different options that you could go about doing this. All right, so I just secured that with my rubber bands and that is going to keep the two halves in place. I just kind of feel and look around the seams and make sure that those are all lined up and they are uh, not gonna have any areas that are off or anything like that. We'll put that off to the side for now while we color our ice mold. All right. So I have my clear ice melt here that I had melted in the melted in the microwave. We're using about six ounces of ice melt today for this project, but we're going to be sectioning it into different sections for the different colors that we are using. So I'm going to uh, section it into about thirds. All right. So that should be enough for our green that we're going to start with. 
And like I said, you can use pre-colored ice malt um, for this if you want to, or you can color yourself. I just wanted to color it myself to show you guys and um, so that you can customize these too because you could do different shades of green. You could also do different colors of pots. I think the pot would be really cute if you did it in like a red or a blue or you did an assortment of them and made them a little bit more colorful would be really cute. But I just went for the traditional kind of terracotta pot with the green succulent or um, cactus in there. Alright, so first off, to make this opaque, because I want that really striking look, rather than a totally glassy look, I am using our uh, base white. So the base white is going to make the ice malt opaque, so we're only going to need a little bit of that. I just added two drops. I like to mix that in first to get it the opacity and the intensity that I want. This is the point when you would, when you would add flavor as well. So if you wanted to add an oil-based flavor, like an oil candy flavoring, that will be perfect. Don't taste test it while it's hot, of course. Um, you want to make sure that you do that when it is cool. So I would just drizzle a little bit out or pour a little mold and let it cool before you taste test it to see if you want to add more. But less is more with um, flavoring, so you really don't need more than a couple of drops, especially with a, this small of an amount. All right, so I got that nice opaque white ice malt, and now we're just going to add one drop of the green. I'm using airbrush colors for this, so this is of course our semi color splash colors. So I'm using Envy Green and Base White. You can use any airbrush colors. We just um, developed these with the Sweet Color Lab to be super duper intense and pigmented for isomalt so that you don't have to mix too much water into your pieces. You can also use powdered colors. Those work really good for opaque finishes like this. Add one more drop of green here. And powder colors, uh, again, will give you that sort of solid finish, and you just want to make sure that you stay away from using gel colors. Gel paste colors will break down the ice malt, and it won't allow it to dry properly. All right, and you can tweak this to whatever shade you want. If you wanted to add a little bit of yellow into it to make more of a lime green, if you like more of a deep green or a light green, you could do different, you know, um, if you're doing multiples of these, you could do different shades just to add a little bit of variation into it. I think that'll be perfect for what we are doing. Now, just from stirring and from mixing in the color, we did get a little bit too thick to pour right now. It's still liquid and very hot, but it is pretty thick. So I'm going to pop this back in the microwave for about 30 seconds or so before we pour it. All right. Now, if you're using a transparent color, if I had, let's say, just added the green and not the white, so the green was more of a glassy look, which would be very pretty for this as well if you wanted little glass cactus, um, then you would definitely want to reboil that after you stirred because stirring mix in, mixes in air bubbles. So uh, the more that you stir, of course, it's going to mix in air and you will see those air bubbles in a tr clear, transparent piece. Now, because we're using an opaque color, we don't have to worry about that as much but we do want it pourable. So you see, I just brought it back to a boil. That's the same level of boil that I would do if I was trying to get the air bubbles out. But of course, because this is solid, you really aren't going, going to see those air bubbles in this piece. But I do like a nice sort of rolling boil. I like it to be pretty furious. I don't want to burn the ice malt, obviously, which is why we only do about 15 second intervals for that. But we do want it to be nice big bubbles at first. We want it to be popping pretty quickly. If you just get it to kind of a low foam sort of on the top, it's not going to be enough to bring out all your air. So just make sure that you uh, bring it to a boil, especially if you're using transparent colors. And then we are going to pour our, um, our cactus in layers. All right, so if I look down into the mold, I can kind of see, I'll try and hold it so you guys can see down in there, I can see the sort of flower shape uh, that we have right here, which is going to be the sides of the cactus. So we only want to fill the green up to where the cactus ends. So where that little flower design stops, there's also then a slight line above that you'll see down in the mold which is the little lip on the pot and then the rest of the pot is smooth so we want to make sure that we don't fill it to the line we actually just fill it to the top of the um, flower shape okay and it may take a couple of times of practice that is where pouring this all in one color and then painting it can be helpful because then you don't have to eyeball it um, like this but it is a pretty big opening on the bottom of this mold so you can see it fairly easily and what we're going to do is after the ice malt cools down and calms down enough that it's not boiling, so you can see even though there's one or two bubbles sitting on the top, it's not actively boiling and bubbling. That's when it's ready to pour. And we're just going to pour this to the top of that flower design. So I think you guys will be able to see that because I can see that on my screen down in there. 
I have it tilted on a little bit of an angle so that you guys can see down in the mold better. I'm just going nice and slow and kind of stopping before I think I need to because I can always add a couple more drops. There we go. All right, can you guys see that okay? Perfect. So I just filled a little bit less than halfway up the mold with that green. And then you can always let this green cool. And if you have to make multiples, you just heat it back up once you're ready to do the next one. So we'll put that off to the side. If I see like one or two little bubbles that rose to the surface, it's not really a big deal to pop those because we're just going to be layering another color on top. Unless this was clear. If you're doing a transparent, then you just want to just very lightly torch down in there to pop any of those surface bubbles. All right. And we're going to let that cool. It's really important to let the ice melt cool in between layers if you're doing something really striking like this. So because I want the green and the terracotta color to be very different from each other, I want to make sure that the first layer of green is cool before we pour in the next one. Otherwise, they're going to marbleize. Sometimes that's what you want. Sometimes you want the colors marbleized, but for this, we want them to be pretty distinct. We also do have this little red flower at the top, but that we're going to paint because it's such a tiny piece, it would be hard to get it to drip precisely down in there easily. So I find it a lot easier just to paint that afterwards. So uh, we are just going to let that cool for probably about maybe five or ten minutes depending on the temperature of your room. If it's a little bit warmer um, you may want to lean more towards 10 or 15 minutes in your room so just kind of depends on your kitchen and what climate you're in but we're just going to let that cool. One way you can test it is using a toothpick or a silicone tool to kind of poke at it. It doesn't have to be totally solid it just needs to not be a liquid anymore. As long as it's uh, or the cooler it is the better the layers are going to hold their distinct lines even if you're doing something that's all one layer. So let's say you wanted to add like colorful stripes into the pot. You can do that as long as each one is cool. You could pour a little bit of one color, a little bit of another color, and you'll get a really pretty sort of striping effect, kind of like layering sand into those pretty glass jars. All right. So that was our um, first part of our big potted uh, cactus. So we're going to put that off to the side. Now we are going to pour some clear for our lollipops with the sprinkles in them. So I have this clear left over here. I'm going to pop that back in the microwave for another 30 seconds while we get all of our other tools here ready. Now this has so many options depending on what kind of sprinkles that you use. So you can really use what you have in your kitchen and have fun with it, kind of picking out what you chose to do. I wanted to get sort of like the imitation of a little bit of a sunset, so that's what I'm going to use for mine. I just have some assorted sprinkle mixes that I um, have collected over, you know, just kind of looking at different colors and things like that. Um, you can use sanding sugars if you want to. You can use non pareils You can use regular sprinkles like that go on ice cream, like rainbow sprinkles. But you have to make sure it's not something that's going to melt. So if you use something like the um, like cake sparkles or a really, really fine sanding sugar, those are more prone to melting, uh, depending on what the base of the sprinkle is. Also, make sure you do not use chocolate sprinkles because some of them are um, chocolate on the inside, like the little crispies, and then they're coated in color. Those will melt from the ice melt. So just make sure it may take some experimenting, um, even just pouring out a tiny little blob of ice melt and pouring some sprinkles into it to see how they react. But um, you can kind of have fun with this because most traditional sprinkles that are not chocolate are going to work really well. And sanding sugar works really well, too. a few more seconds in the microwave there. Now, I did a couple different things with these. This one I did the yellow sprinkles and then the orange sprinkles in the middle and then the yellow on top. And then this one, I actually did some brown sugar on the bottom to kind of emulate like a sand look um, at the base. So it gave it a little bit more of a sort of scene. So that's up to you if you want to go a little bit more natural with it or if you want to go more bright and fun. I think I'm gonna go a little brighter this time and just use my yellow and orange. Okay, so see how I got that to a nice rolling boil. We're going to let those bubbles cool before we pour it into our mold. So I'll just set that off to the side for a few. All right, now the mold that we're using is the Simi Shaker Maker Lollipop Mold. This is a two inch circle or two inch disc, and it works perfect for the sizes of most of the lollipops that I like. And I have a lot, again, of freedom with this. We like to do all of our molds with tons of different options to them where you could do them solid. You can fill up this mold and drain it out and do the shaker lollipops if you want to instead of having them solid like this. Um, you can do it, you know, to have the sprinkles actually moving inside, which I have other tutorials on doing, but 
Um, so you do have some different options. You could also just use these discs, discs instead of turning them into lollipops. You could use them as little cupcake toppers. They're the perfect size to go on top of a cupcake uh, for a little flat decoration that looks really pretty, almost like stained glass. And um, you can also use them on the sides of cakes or whatever you need to use them for. They work great on top of different kinds of desserts as well, not just cupcakes. All right, so I have kind of an assortment of yellow sprinkles in here. There's some regular, um, like, Jimmy sprinkles. There's some pearls. There's some flat discs. And then I have just some really pretty bright pearls that are orange in this one. So I'll have those on hand. All right, our ice melt is just about ready. You can see a lot of the bubbles have calmed down, but there's still a couple that are moving and popping in there. So we want to make sure that we wait for that to cool a little bit. Before we pour, that's also going to be key with these sprinkles is not putting the sprinkles in when the ice mold is too hot because it can melt them even if the sprinkles are okay to use an ice mold. If the ice mold is way too hot, it can melt them. So I like to wait a little bit, uh, not just when I'm waiting for it to settle, but actually after I pour, which I'll show you. Does anybody have any questions so far? Let me look back in the comments. Hi, Barbie. Welcome. Connie's here. Tahisha's here. Welcome. Welcome. Hey, Heather. Hi, Becky. Hi, Carol. Welcome in, guys. So, so far we've just poured our top half of the potted uh, cactus that we are going to do. So I just poured up in the kind of flower shape with the green first, and we're letting that cool while we get our flat lollipops ready. I like to do almost like how you would do a set of cookies with a couple of different designs. I like to do that with lollipops because I just think that it's really fun and interesting to have a couple of different elements going on. Plus, the, the cactus is fairly heavy. It is a lot of, you know material so if you wanted to have some other lollipops that are a little bit lighter and take a little bit less work or time to cool it's nice to just have that variation in um, you know options too so I like to have a whole bunch of different ones plus I usually have a bunch of different ideas when I go into making a certain theme so I want to try them all out and that's usually why I have a few different ones because I like to see kind of different levels and it's nice to have different levels of work as well because depending on their budget or how much time you're willing or needing um, or have to put into these pieces it's nice to have some different options too of something that's a little bit more simple or something that's a little bit more intricate and you know has a, maybe a higher budget level for your clients so I like to kind of accommodate to everybody because I know everybody's a little bit different in what they specialize in all right so this has stopped boiling so we're going to go ahead and pour I'm just going to pour enough to cover the bottom of the lollipop mold so that it's not too thick. Okay, if you need to tilt it a little bit even, you can. All right, I don't seem to have any bubbles because I did let it boil and then boil the bubbles out by letting it cool. But if you did, you wanna make sure that you pop those before you add the sprinkles. And then we're just gonna wait a few seconds before we add in those sprinkles. So I'm gonna grab a cup, I find that's easier. You can also use a spoon or like a tablespoon would work. But I'm just going to use my little cup to help sprinkle them in because sometimes when I use my fingers, I feel like I crush them too much or it's a little bit harder to be precise. So we're going to wait just a few seconds. You can even put your little fan on. And you can do these assembly line style too, especially if you're using a mold that has a lot of cavities or you have a few of these molds, which I like to have on hand, um, you know, to be able to make things a little bit faster. It is nice to be able to pour, pour, pour and, you know, put the sprinkles in with something like this that doesn't need to be piping hot. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're just going to put a few sprinkles in. I feel like all the heavy sprinkles always come out first on mine. Do you guys have that? So I'm just gonna kind of take some of those heavier ones out after a second, put some of those in. Don't use your finger to move the sprinkles around. That was a very, very bad example of me. <laughs> I use a little toothpick or a silicone tool to move those around and kind of press them into the ice melt too to make sure they're really stuck. I don't want it to go all the way through to the bottom of the mold because I want that clear glassy finish. I don't want it to have any texture or exposed sprinkle on the other underside. All right. If you feel like you accidentally waited too long for your sprinkles or to put your sprinkles on, you can retorch slightly. They just may not stick quite as well. You could also layer ice melt over the back of this if you wanted to. It'd be really pretty to kind of encase them. It'll just make a lot thicker of a lollipop, so just keep that in mind. Some of these are going to fall off. You're not going to be able to get every single one stuck down on there because there is so many in here that 
it's kind of impossible to make sure you press down every single one, so don't stress about it too much. You can always use a little bit of ice melt or edible glue to stick some on the back if you needed to fill a hole or something later. But we're going pretty impressionistic for this, so I'm not too worried. All right, perfect. So we're gonna let that cool. Those will take probably about no more than 10 minutes or so. Anybody have any questions so far? Hey, Laura, happy Saturday. All right, so we're going to let that one cool as well. And we are going to pour our next layer on, and we're also going to pour our little cactus here. This one's still a little bit too soft to pour the next layer, so let's do our mini cactus first. So I'm just going to warm this green back up because it's a little bit pliable in the middle, but it's definitely not pliable enough to pour. So we're going to pop that back in for 30 seconds. And this cute little cactus is the kind of mold that you can use for so many different things because you can even just pour this in ice malt and put it onto your cookies. So you don't have to have a whole bunch of ice malt on your pieces if you don't want to. You can use it as a really pretty sort of statement piece and uh, really kind of set your pieces apart. You can do them the solid opaque like I'm doing to match my cactus, but how cute would little sort of glass um, cactus be on your cookies or on your cakes. You could do like around the border of your cake, you can have little cactus, um, you know, maybe in like a brown sugar border or something like that. That would be really cute. Maybe some little flowers in there. All right. There we go. I love cactus. I think it's such a cute theme with the succulents and everything, too. Um, we don't have get cactus here in Florida very often, um, at least naturally. We can grow some uh, smaller kinds, but it's definitely a little bit too humid for them. Mom was telling me there's a really big super bloom going on out in the desert right now. I don't know if you guys, any of you guys are out there, but have you experienced that? It's supposed to be super pretty. We've been through it before. Yeah, we've driven through it um, when we were going to California. A couple of times and it's really pretty you don't expect to see so many flowers in the desert but they're all so beautiful and so different from the flowers that we get here on the east coast too all right so i'm just going to go ahead and pour and again i'm pouring this all in one color and then we'll paint the little flower and the little dots on it later i'm not filling it all the way to the top because i don't want the ice melt to overflow or it to be too chunky so i'm just going to pour just enough and then I'm going to spread it with my silicone tool, or you can use your toothpick or skewer. Pop any little bubbles on the back. And let that cool. All right, any little pieces of ice melt that drip on your silicone mat, I just pick them up with my tool here, or when they're cool, you can pick them up with your hands and throw them back in the bowl. Super cute. All right, so that was not gonna take probably five minutes to cool because it is so tiny, so they're very fast and very quick turnover, which is nice. All right, we're gonna pour a little bit more of our clear ice mold into another bowl, and that's what we're gonna make into this terracotta color for the pot. But again, you could use any color you want. A really bright blue would be so pretty. Um, reds, purples, yellows. Of course, I'm partial to my yellows. All right, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna turn this one white. All right. Now I'm gonna be using a little bit of orange and a little bit of brown airbrush color into this to turn it into the terracotta. And of course you can kind of tint the terracotta darker or lighter to contrast with whatever color you chose, um, you know, shade that you chose of green. Pour your little cactus in there. Another little trick that I also wanted to share with you guys, if you take the our amber ice malt, our amber pre-colored ice malt, and add white to it, it makes a beautiful, beautiful terracotta color. You can even add a tiny bit more orange if you need to, if you wanted it to be a little bit of a brighter terracotta, but just on its own, it creates this beautiful sort of opaque, earthy tone that I really, really love. All right, we are gonna add just a drop of citrus orange from Semi Color Splash in there. Just one drop. And I'm also gonna add a little touch of brown. So I pre-mixed some brown a little while ago. Um, 
this one is mixed with the semi color splash since we don't have a pre colored brown. Um, but if you are coloring ice malt, the formula for brown is three drops of candy apple red, two drops of envy green, and one drop of semi yellow. So I just mixed that up in my cup and I'm just dipping my spatula in if I can fit it down in there. I'm just dipping my spatula in to get a tiny bit instead of doing a whole drop so that I don't make it too dark. And then we'll see what shade that is. If we like that. And you can keep adding more white, more brown, more orange until it's the shade that you like. This one's a little bit brighter than my original, but I actually really like it. I like those bright oranges, plus it matches with my, um, my sprinkles really nicely. Right. And you can even just reheat this if it gets too thick in the middle of mixing colors. You don't only have to reheat it at the end. You can definitely do it as you're mixing your colors and add a little bit more brown just to dull it out slightly there we go so it's more of an earthy color than a neon color remember browns and blacks will tone down your colors if they're too bright because i know neutrals are really popular right now rather than super bright neons um, for a lot of styles so depending on if you're using a warm or a cool toned color you can use brown or black just to take some of the brightness away All right, we're popping that back in the microwave for 30 seconds. The heat also helps the color mix in and emulsify so that you get a more even color and you don't get any pockets of colors that didn't mix all together. The boiling helps to move it around. All right, I'm gonna put my little um, lollipop here with the sprinkles in front of my fan, my small fan, just to help it cool down a little faster. I'll put my little guy over there too. Alright, everybody doing good? Any questions? There we go. And of course we're going to let that cool down just a little bit before we pour that so that it doesn't encourage the colors to mix together because sometimes when they're too hot it can also melt together easier. So. We are just going to let that settle a little bit before we pour our second layer. And you can play around with flavors with this too. You could do kind of the top half one flavor and the bottom half another if you wanted to, you know, do a cool flavor combo. You could do one part, you know, like a lemonade flavor and one part strawberry or kind of have fun mixing and matching those different recipes. Alright, so you can see the opaque colors always cool down pretty quickly because they thicken up faster. So you can see this one's already calmed down quite a bit. We'll give it just maybe 30 more seconds before we pour in. Um, let's see, Carol asked, did you put pour clear over the layer of sprinkles? I didn't, only because I wanted them to stay pretty thin and not be too heavy. But you absolutely could if you wanted more of a 360 encasing of the sprinkles. Um, it'll just be a lot thicker of a lollipop. So just kind of keep that in mind depending on how big they are. They might be a little bit heavy. But yeah, these I just left. And it kind of looks cool, I think, on the back to see the texture of it. All right, so now we're just going to fill the mold all the way up with our terracotta color right over top of that green. to the tippy top. Now you could put your lollipop stick in now if you wanted it to be encased in. I just find that by the time it cools it's always crooked no matter how many times I check it so um, that's why I like to put mine on after because it's very quick and easy. Or of course you could leave it without the stick and use that just as a little decoration on your cake. Alright. All right, so we'll put that off to the side. That's going to take a while to cool just because it is a 3D piece and it's encased in that silicone that's kind of insulating it. So I would give it at least a half an hour or so. But by demonstration magic here, I have one already pre-made. So look how cute our little uh, cactus is. This one came out of the mold super duper easy. Just unmolded it really quick. And it does have some bubbles across the surface, which I'll show you we're going to get rid of. You don't have to. I mean, they look pretty cool, especially on the cactus part that would have the spines and everything. It's okay to leave it, but I just did want it a little bit smoother and a little bit shinier. So we are going to torch those away. All right. 
So to do that, we're just going to lay it down on our silicone mat. Don't hold it in your hand while you torch. And we're just going to do this in light layers because we don't want to melt or make anything drip. So we're just going to lightly torch. And I try and only torch on the top because once you start getting into the sides, like going like this, it's going to start fighting with gravity and the gravity will want to pull it down easier than the, the top that has a better center of gravity. So that's when it can start dripping. And you can do this in light layers. You can let it cool in between and then do a little bit more. Don't try and rush it, especially down in these kind of crevices between the uh, panels here or the pieces of the cactus. It can be harder for the heat to get down in there at first. So just don't go too fast so that you don't risk melting it. You can break this up and remelt the colors, but the orange and the or the terracotta and the green won't really make that pretty of a color when they go together. Might make a nice brown, but it's uh, not going to be quite as pretty because green and orange cancel each other out. So try to just take your time with it so you don't have to remelt. Hey Donald, how you doing today? All right, so I just put the fan on that to help it cool faster. Don't mind my ice milk covered fan. Actually, that might be um, paint from when I was flicking some paint around the other day. <laughs> All right. And then we just rotate and do a little bit more. I might have had one or two air pockets because I did pour this slightly too hot um, when I was pre-making it. Just because I was being too impatient, but that's okay because the torching pretty much melts all that out. And yeah, I can go back over those spots and torch again after it cools down a little bit. Alright. And you see it only takes, with the fan, it only takes, you know, 15 or 30 seconds to cool. You could also do this just standing up and go around, but again, it, unless it's straight down, it, there's more of a chance of it dripping. So that's why I like to lean this on its side and do my torching horizontally so that if you have a flat pane and you torch downwards, there's really nowhere that it's being pulled to go but down, so it stays very smooth. But if you are torching on something on its side, gravity is going to be pulling on those drips. So just a little tip to make sure that you don't drip too easily. All right. Cooling that down. And you can kind of do as much of this as you want to, depending on your patience level. <laughs> Just pick up this little extra piece that was from the spatula. That'll go right back in the bowl and be remelted. All right. I think while that's cooling, our little cactus is ready too. Make sure that you tap it with your silicone tool or toothpick, not your finger, to make sure it's all set up before you unmold. Super duper cute. I love this little guy. And again, fondant, gum paste, modeling chocolate, regular chocolate. You can use all sorts of things in that mold. It's a little bit rough on the edges because I was just spreading it in the mold really quickly and I like to clean those up after. So what I'm going to do first before I torch that is I'm just going to uh, flip it over and actually torch the underneath, not with the fan on it. Because that'll just blow out that flame. And that'll just smooth over those edges so that it is a little bit more perfect. And then once that cools, you can see it just cleans it up really, really nicely. No trimming, no cutting. Super duper easy. All right. Put that guy over here. Put this one over here. All right. We are going to, I think we can go ahead and unmold our sprinkle one here. The sprinkles might go rolling, so you may even just want to flip it and catch those sprinkles before they go everywhere. Um, and then I'll just throw those back in the bag to use again. This one might still be a little warm, but it's okay. We're going to rush it. Super pretty. All right, so we're going to put that one down and torch not the sprinkle side because those will definitely melt or burn, but we are going to torch the ice melt side, so the side that was touching the mold. And it makes a huge difference. I'll just do half so you can see a little closer. Makes a huge difference in how clear that is and how much those colors pop. You guys can see the difference. Makes it look just like real glass. 
especially when it's flat like this because the uh, image won't be distorted. Remember, just like with glass, if you have a dome or something like that, it's going to project the size of the image. So you may just want to go a little bit smaller than you think you may need at first if you're doing an image or something in the back of that. Super duper pretty. And it's nice and thin too. All right, I'm gonna flip this mold over and just let this cool flat upside down or ice melt side down for a little bit. Just because I did rush it slightly, I'll put it in front of my fan. All right, now we're gonna add our lollipop sticks. So I'll heat back up my clear ice melt. And then we're gonna do some painting as well on these. Everybody doing good? Let me check here. Awesome. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, let me know any questions that you have, guys. Grab that guy back. Alright, so I just have some regular lollipop sticks here that we're going to use to attach on. And I like to turn a lot of my regular molds into lollipops rather than only using specific lollipop molds because it really does give you so much freedom to turn anything into a lollipop. So you could even, if you had some smaller sticks and you wanted to have like tiny little uh, mini cactus lollipops, that would be super cute. Again, you can even just pour half of the, um, the cactus if you wanted to and have flatter and so that way it's not quite so heavy and you can have them flat on the lollipop stick would be really, really cute. So many options. Get a little bit of that texture away. All right, so we are going to just dip and stick our lollipop stick to the bottom and to the underneath. So kind of figure out which side you want as the top or the bottom of your pieces. So I'm just going to dip that in. I'm just using clear so that it matches both of these, but you could use whatever color. Making sure, especially with the sprinkle one, that it sticks all the way down to the ice malt as well as to the sprinkles, just in case the sprinkles come loose. You can even scoop and drip a little bit more glue onto it if you're nervous about that. A little bit more ice malt glue, I should say. And then I want to get a pretty good chunk onto the stick, and I just stick it to the bottom of the container. Try and get it centered, and I will just let that cool for a few. Grab my fan. And this is what I do with any of my molds. I either stick it on the back or I stick it to the bottom. And it'll be that ice melt will melt into the ice melt surface, and it'll really make it strong enough to hold on. But again, you can add more ice melt on top afterwards, after it's cool if you wanted to. Alright. So you can do this with chocolate, too. How cute with little chocolate cactus pops be super yummy too and this is kind of a wide enough mold you could even add a filling inside of it if you wanted to i would probably do the actual cactus part of this mold like the the green part would be solid just because those have really deep rivets so it, i don't want it to break if it was just a thin layer so i would probably fill the whole bottom part like i did with the green solid chocolate first and then after that sets up a little bit i would fill the rest or fill the rest of the mold and drain it out or fill it and paint it up the sides so that only the pot part is hollow does that make sense that way when i unmold it it has a lot more strength of the chocolate on the actual cactus part Plus, it would just be a solid chocolate yummy spot, too. Never enough chocolate, in my opinion. Alright. There we go. So, just letting that cool. Okay, cool. I said that makes perfect sense. I like to kind of strengthen certain areas if I'm going to use poured chocolate, especially if you're using something like candy melts or compound chocolate rather than using real tempered chocolate because tempered chocolate is very strong where compound or melting chocolate is not quite as strong. I still have a couple little bubbles on the pot that I could take my time and go back and torch those if I wanted to to make it a little bit smoother. Do that while I'm waiting for the bottom part to cool. 
You can even, if you do get like an air pocket or something that makes some lines a little bit off, you can go back and use your tool and just kind of fix those. I'm not going to worry too much about it. You can also fill the top with a little bit of like cookie sand or brown sugar if you wanted to to make it look like there's sand down in there. I just went for a little bit more of a simplistic approach with these because of the colors. They just look more cartoony. Okay. That one is cool too. We're going to attach on the little cactus to the lollipop just by torching and sticking it on, but you can also use a little bit of liquid ice melt if you feel more comfortable doing that. You could add a couple of these if you want to, or even pour only parts of them so that they have slightly different shapes. How cute. Alright. Okay, so now we're going to do my favorite part, which is painting. So, let's move some of this stuff out of the way. Grab our paint palette here. Okay, so let's do our little red um, flowers first so that they have a little bit of time to dry. So I'm going to start with a base of my base white. So the same thing that we're mixing in, we're painting on top because the Simi Color Splash are that versatile. So we're just going to do one drop of white. Actually, let's do a couple drops of white in this palette. Then I'm going to take my Candy Apple Red in a different palette. Do like four or five drops of that. And I'm going to take a brush and only instead of doing a whole drop, just kind of like I touched the spatula into the white earlier, so I did, or into the brown earlier, so I didn't get too much, I'm only going to touch a little bit of the white into the red so I don't turn out with pink because our candy apple red turns into a beautiful pink. But you just have to be careful if that's not your intention. So the white is just going to help it stand out on the green because the colors by themselves, all except the base white, are transparent. So you'll get a beautiful watercolor or stained glass look if you paint them over ice malt, but if they're on a color and you want to completely change the color, you need some opacity, and that's where the base white comes in. So I'm just kind of looking at it, seeing when there is enough. Sometimes I'll even paint a lighter coat of like a pale, even a pink on top with the base white in it, if that's what, ha what it turns to, and then I'll go back over it with just the pure red, because at least it gives it a base of opacity, kind of like using a primer and then painting on top of that, um, like on a wall. It covers up the previous color and lets you add the new color on easier. All right, I'm trying to do this upside down because you guys are upside down to me, so. Paint a little bit, and it may take a couple of coats to get the opacity or the intensity that you want because ice melt doesn't absorb color the same way as fondant and gum paste does. So it's kind of like painting on glass. You need a few coats with this type of paint, and then it looks beautiful. Okay, get a little flower. I'm going to do the same thing to the little flower on the flat cactus. Trying not to overpaint onto the lollipop underneath. You could paint this first if you want before you attach it on. I just feel like I'm always worried I'm going to smudge the paints off when I paint first, so I usually assemble things before I paint, personally. Cute! You could even add more flowers um, by making them by hand or with little molds onto this if you wanted to, especially with that one because it has more spots that it would flower, so you could put other little pieces on there if you wanted to. That would be really, really cute. Move this one back up. Alright, now the dots. I have a really fun tip for how to get those dots more perfect. Um, so what we're going to do is get a new thing of white because I got some red into my other white. So I'm just going to do a couple drops. doesn't take very much. I'm just doing two drops right now. I use a ball tool whenever I want to get polka dots. It's way easier than trying to get a perfect dot with a brush. Even if you have a round brush, it can still be hard because the brush is soft and you, if you press it too hard, it gets funky. So this eliminates all of that because it's always going to be a circle. So I use a ball tool. I have some teeny tiny ball tools here, but you can also use a big ball tool and just not press it as hard. Or if you're going for bigger dots, you can use the end of a paintbrush if you want to. Um, whatever you have that's round and smooth and hard is the main thing so that you don't get any variation. The beauty of paint 
brushes is that you can get variation, right? You can get really thin lines if you touch lightly, or you can press harder to get wider lines. But for things like polka dots that you want all pretty much the same, you don't really want that to happen. So um, that's what I'm going to use. So first, let's do our, I'll do this cactus here. So I'm just going to dip right into the straight base white. You can thin that down a little bit if you wanted to, but the thick base white is going to help stay in dots too. And you just get perfect little polka dots. Okay, I re-dip every few dots to make sure there's enough. The less that you have on your ball tool, the smaller the dot will be. So sometimes you'll notice if you do too many in one go, they get smaller and smaller. So I just keep re-dipping, but it's okay if they're a little bit different. I think that's kind of cute. And this just gives us the illusion of sort of those spines or the, that spiny texture without having to make tons of teeny tiny little spines that would drive us crazy. Super cute. Plus again, it just adds that sort of whimsy and that really intense contrast to the piece that we're going for with this um, style. All right, and then this one I'm just doing dots kind of spaced out going up. Trying to do about the same amount of dots on each side. As you can tell, I always hold my breath when I'm doing little things like this, so sorry if I stop talking. And if you're using the straight base white, you shouldn't really have to go over it again. It should just be opaque the first time, but you could if you really needed to. Doing about five dots on each one. And look how fast that is. No messing around with brush strokes or stressing to get the perfect dot. It just does it all for you. And if you want to shade a little bit underneath the rim, you could use a little bit of dry dust or some brown under there, or you can leave it exactly as is, again, depending on how um, much you know detail that you want to put into these you can also you know paint around the edges of the circles if you wanted to or you know put little like clouds in the sky or you know a cute little bird or something like that if you wanted to go for that sort of nature theme all right and there is our finished lollipops how cute is that perfect for that desert theme that's so popular right now and kind of that succulents and cactus trend um, and just having different ones, like I said, I like to do some different ones in my lollipop spreads, just like you would with cookies, because it adds some interest and it gives you some fun, creative time coming up with some different um, designs. But I really love this cactus mold. And again, how cute would it be if we even just had the half, like the flat half, or you can take that and put it onto a cake or um, on top of a little cupcake would be so cute, making them in chocolate or fondant. Uh, remember that you need to glaze these, so don't do it until all the paint is totally, totally dry, but you can definitely glaze this with the clear edible glaze spray as soon as they are dry and that will keep them shiny. I made these original ones that I made um, probably uh, a while ago, over a month ago, yeah. maybe even longer because I made them a little bit early. Um, and yeah, they, as you can see, are still super duper shiny and I didn't even keep them in a sealed container, but a lot of times I do, which I mentioned in my new blog post, make sure to follow my new blog. If you don't, um, already, um, subscribe to it cause I'm posting all sorts of ice melt basics, tips and tricks. And my latest post was how to store your ice melt pieces. So, um, with these, you definitely can leave them out after they're glazed and they won't get sticky, but if you want to package them, it'll keep them shinier even longer. If you package them right away uh, in a completely airtight container, and I mean right away, like as soon as this paint is dry right away, um, then you don't necessarily have to spray it, but it will help to keep them shinier longer if you're making these more than a few days ahead of time, depending on your humidity level. So I do recommend glazing just a light coat. You won't taste it once it's dry, as long as you do a nice thin coat. And uh, once it's dry, you can either seal them in your bags or you can uh, have them out on a display. However, you are using your lollipops. And yeah, I just really love how these came out. I like the sort of um, abstract sunset sort of feel to them and how the colors all go together. It's very sort of fiesta theme too, which would be really cute for, um, you know, Cinco de Mayo or anything coming up too. Ooh, right. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. All right, perfect. Okay, so let me know any questions that you guys have. I'm going to attempt to bring this up without dropping you guys because I always do that. Um, while we go over our final little details, 
can move this up just a little bit. Okay, how does that look, guys? Look okay? I'm not going to mess with it. <laughs> All right, what do you guys think? Uh, can you guys see using the cactus theme? Or have you guys noticed using that, a lot of that trend lately? Let me know. Make sure to tag me, too, if you do any of these projects um, in your own work, because I would love to see what you do with the molds. And uh, this kind of theme, if you run with it with your own creativity, is always awesome to see. Awesome. I do have a few announcements, as always, um, that we have at the end of our lives of some new projects and things coming up. So um, uh, let me grab my little cheat sheet here. Tomorrow is my Flamingo Zoom class, so if you are um, a part of that, we are starting on Zoom at 12 p.m. Uh, if you're not part of it and you want to come and make some blown ice milk flamingos with us, that is still available on my website to sign up. And if you can't make the live class, we're also every student gets the pre-recorded version as well within a week after. So um, you will get that pre-recorded tutorial to do at your own pace for making our beautiful blown ice milk flamingos. And that is on Zoom, so it'll be interactive. I cannot wait to see everybody's flamingos tomorrow. It's always such a good time. Uh, so yeah, that's tomorrow. Um, we also, let's see, in uh, two weeks is SoFlo. Who am I going to see at SoFlo, guys? I cannot wait. Um, SoFlo Cake and Candy Show in Miami. We will have a vendor booth, so make sure to come and say hi. 422. Um, 422, thank you, is our vendor booth number. We will be there. Uh, let's see, right after that, the first week of May is CookieCon. Um, we unfortunately are not going to be at CookieCon Ohio. We're so sad uh, to miss our cookie friends, but uh, we are going to be having some demonstrations by Carol Fisher uh, and Jennifer for Mosier at the Icing Images booth, and they will be carrying our ice melt there too. So if you're planning to go and you wanted to stock up, make sure that you go and check out the awesome demos that they are going to be doing. We also have some really fun... Um uh, classes that are going on too that are going to be using our ice malt with Sarah Weber. Um, Sam Opterbosch is going to be doing it as well. So um, yeah, make sure that you check that out. Uh, lots of see me still there, even though we aren't able to make it. Um, let's see. Uh, let's. Oh, also my next classes too. So on. Uh, let's see. We'll start with our Zoom class. I actually have it back here if you guys can see it. We are going to be making our blown teapot here. So uh, we are going to be making this all blown and hand sculpted. And the flowers are a beautiful new mold that we have. We're going to be doing all hand pulled um, vines. And so that is going to be our uh, May, yeah, May Zoom class. We're also going to be using our teapot or teacup to go with it. Let me grab this here. Super cute little tea set. Uh, this one is another one of our molds too, so you will get that with the accessory kit. If you sign up with the accessory kit, we have it discounted. Um, all of our accessory kits are always discounted 20% off. So you can get all the stuff, the seamy stuff that you need to make that. So that one is going to be on May 7th, I believe. Yeah, May 7th is our next Zoom class. And then our um, demo, our live Playdate demo, just like this for May, is actually really exciting because we are teaming up with the Frosting Creators of San Antonio again. They are doing their virtual uh, sugar show, and I'm going to be demonstrating as well as I think they have 28 different demonstrators over the course of two days doing live demos, and it's all totally free to watch. So make sure that you tune in. My demo is going to be on Saturday, the 20th of May. Um, it's the 20th and 21st, Saturday and Sunday, and I'm going to be showing you how to make this really pretty lace shoe. The theme is lace and pearls, so I wanted to go with a really pretty lace shoe with one of our brand new designs for uh, lace, our cello sheet. So we're going to be making that during the demo. I do have an accessory kit for this one as well if you want to make it along with me. And there are VIP bags if you go to the Frosting Creators Facebook page. Yes, so make sure that you check that out because they do have awesome VIP bags with tons of swag in there. Um, let's see. So that's going to be our play date uh, for the month. Let's see what else do we have. Uh, I have some really exciting live uh, in-person classes to announce coming up. The first one being on uh, June 10th and 11th, I am going to be teaming up with the amazing Chef Benny Rivera of City Cakes. We are doing a collaboration class at City Cakes in New York City. So if you are in the New York area or the surrounding area, make sure that you check it out because this is a one-of-a-kind collaboration class um, where we're going to be making a sort of retro five star diner inspired piece um so make sure that you check all that out the information is online too so um yeah make sure you check that out come and visit us it's going to be such a good time it is going to be a real cake as well so you'll have a real cake to bring home which is super duper uh exciting and then we're going to be um for the ice malt part we're going to be making an awesome uh, milkshake strawberry milkshake out of ice malt all hand sculpted
melted and um, poured and blown ice mold. So super duper excited about that. That is June 10th and 11th, and you can get all the information on the City Cakes website. Um, and then our next live demo is going to be the awesome Amy Goff. She is going to be demonstrating on, uh, let's see, this week on the 20th at 4 p.m. EST, and she is going to be making some awesome uh, decorations for you guys, some ice mold decorations. And uh, yeah, so make sure you tune into that. It's at 4 p.m. EST on uh the 20th, which I believe is Wednesday. Um, I might be wrong about that, but the 20th, make sure you tune in. It's right here on the Seamy Cakes page. Thursday. Thursday, thank you. And it is totally free. Uh, Lori said that is her birthday weekend. She'll tell her sons to fly her out for her birthday. Sounds great to me. We can celebrate your birthday. <laughs> Love it. All right. And then we also just announced, we announced in our retreat group, but I'm going to announce it here too. We are uh, having our 2024 See Me Retreat on January 16th through the 18th. We are so excited to have another retreat here um, or sort of here in Cocoa Beach, Florida. And um, it's going to be such a great time. The last two have been so much fun. So make sure that you keep your eyes peeled because we will have more class information and event information. We are cooking up some new stuff uh, for this year um, as well as some familiar favorites. So make sure that you check that out um, and make sure to join the See Me Torch team too if you are not a part of it because we always post all of our updates there. And we have a deal going on right now of 20% off all See Me garden collection molds. So including this cactus um, and including the mini cactus as well, those are in there as well as all of our other garden theme molds. You will get a code in the See Me Torch team if you're a member for your coupon. Uh, let's see. I think that was everything, right? Did I miss I anything? Think, yeah. <laughs> lots and lots going on, as always, guys. All right. Perfect. Yay, go Torch Team. I love it. <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this live demo. Make sure to tag me in pictures. Um, you can always ask me questions too. If you have any questions, send them to me in a direct message or post them in the Torch team. Make sure to, yeah, post your pictures in the Torch team if you make these pieces. And uh, hopefully we'll see be seeing you guys, some of you guys at SoFlow. Uh, for anybody doing the Bloom Flamingo tomorrow, I will see you back here uh, or on Zoom then. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.